in my game I have this enemy that we'll see over here which is programmed to whenever it sees me run into the opposite direction and making this is actually remarkably easy using Unreal's build-in query system. So let's take a look at that today. It does freak out sometimes a little bit when I'm on the edge of its vision <laughs> but that's besides the point for now. So let's get started in this entirely new project over here. The final result of which will be down below in the description to download for Patreon and YouTube members to play around in, but if you just follow along you should be fine. Let's get started uh, by making a new blueprint class or a character uh, because we need a enemy to actually drive uh, through that AI query system. And in here we'll simply use the uh, many skeleton and give it the proper animation blueprint and just as simply as that we have a basic enemy. On begin play we'll uh, get the AI controller uh, of this actor itself. Usually I would put this on the AI controller this code but that requires us to make it a separate AI controller and I don't feel like doing that. So what we'll do is we'll just get the controller this way and we'll run a behavior tree and we'll need to make a behavior tree. So we make a behavior tree, call that uh, bt run away, and all this is going to do is it's going to find a location to move to, that's what we're going to be using the query system for, and then it's going to move to that location. So I have set up a small little behavior tree here which is the very very basics. We have a blackboard with a key for the moving location, and we have a parallel node which uh, makes us move towards that location and then in the parallel task it will be running a EQS query and that's the thing that we're going to be focusing on here today. This query is going to be updating whatever this move to location is that way the enemy will be constantly trying to get away from us. So let's get into that. For now uh, we're going to start off by making a blueprint class for a uh, within all classes for a EQS testing pawn and this is just for visualization uh, purposes so let's call this EQS testing and when we pull that into the world as you can see here it has a little pawn icon and we can put in somewhere here in the details a query template and this will just visualize us and show us kind of how this works to begin with. So let's make ourselves that query template. And in artificial intelligence we can make an environment query and we'll call this run from player. And if we just drag that into this template over here uh, we'll see nothing happens yet. So let's open this up and we get a interface that looks a little bit like the behavior tree interface. And we're going to do this side by side because I want you to be able to see how this updates in real time. So if we pull off this route, we have a list of things that we can do. And this will generate a number of points around a certain location that will then be weighed against each other to decide where the character should, in this case, move to. It could also be used for a location that a character should shoot at or whatever. You can do a lot of things with this. The simplest implementation is just getting the player character and moving away from it, which is what we're doing today, but you can be really, really creative. So if we uh, use a grid, for instance, you will see it starts generating points around it in a grid. And here we can see the grid half size. That is how big the grid will be in its radius. And then the space between will be how, well, big the space between is. And the two of them together will make for the amount of points in your grid altogether. Now, it is important that you don't go overboard with this, because any calculation that we're going to be doing here uh, with the tests that we're going to be doing in a moment will be done on every single one of these points, on every single instance of this behavior tree. So if we have 10 enemies and they're all running a line tracer per point, and every single enemy has this query which has like 150 points, we're suddenly doing 1500 line tracers per frame. And that's going to absolutely annihilate your performance. So do be careful with that. A good way to deal with that as well is to first make a selection with simpler calculations and only do the more complex calculation at the very end of your testing. But again, we'll get into that 
uh, in a moment. For now, I think this will do. Now, we also have this option around here called Generate Around. And by default, that is set to the querier. So that is the actor itself that is running this query. We can make this into any context that we could possibly want. And let's actually make a uh, special context just to show you. So if I right click here and I go to Blueprint class and I look for context, I can make a environment context blueprint base and we'll call this um, player context and this will be getting the player. So if we open this up, we've got four functions here that we can override, and that is provide actor set, provide locations set, provide single actor, or provide single location. In this case, we're going to be providing an actor because we want to get a reference to the player. So we can override this, and this is simply, uh, we can see the create object reference and the create actor reference, and then the resulting actor. We're not gonna be using any of these two, but if you, for instance, want to have a enemy that has a throwing weapon, I'm just pointing something out there, that would be a child object, like a child actor component, on a specific blueprint class. So you can then cast this actor to that, get the reference to your child actor component in there, and return that in here. And then you can use it in your querying system to say, maybe try to move towards the weapon that you have thrown, unless it is next to the player and if it is just like move to whatever position is best in those calculations like the points being close to the weapon will give it a positive value and the points being close to the player will give it a negative value and that way it will make a weight decision on where it should move for now though we'll just simply get the player character and we can just simply return this again this is the most simple implementation of this that you could ever think about so instead of generating around the query now, we could also generate it around the player itself. And you'll see that these things now uh, do disappear. If I uh, start up the game and I press F8, however, you will see that now the points generate around the player character. So if I move this around a little bit and I select the EQS testing again, it does need to move itself to update in the uh, visual view here. That doesn't have anything to do with the actual way it works um, when running these queries. But you can see that these points are now generating around the player. That's not what we're going to be using it for, but it is a good way to show how this works. So going back here, generating around, uh, we're going to generate around the query itself. And since this is going to be about uh, navigation, we're actually not going to just use the simple grid we're going to be using the pathing grid. And this will take nav meshes into account. So if we go into place actors here, and we place in a uh, nav mesh, we'll be able to see that it only generates the points within the nav mesh. So it's not taken into account any points outside of the nav mesh because it knows it can't walk there anyway. And the absolutely genius bit about this is that of course the nav meshes can also include things like the slopes, and higher up platforms and the points will then generate up on there as well rather than just on a simple plane so this is very very nice indeed now we have this grid but how can we actually use that because we uh, can add tests to this so we can add a test so for instance we can say we want to check the distance from our querier which is the AI actor, to, in this case, the player. So let's check that distance. And for now, uh, the distance will be set to zero on all of these, as you can see. Because, let's select this, we're trying to uh, first test purpose. Do we want to filter or score or both? So here we can also filter out things. So for instance, if we want to check the distance, which is a relatively cheap calculation to do, and we want to only calculate things like uh, line traces, if you want to do that, if the distance to a certain point is less than a thousand units. That will eliminate a lot of these points and make those line traces a lot less intensive on your CPU. Uh, for now, we're going to use this to just uh, score our points. And we can see by default, it's calculating the distance from the query up to each point on a scale of 0 to 1. So the points just beneath it are 0 0.05, and the furthest away points are scored with a 1. So 
when it has to choose a position to walk toward, it's going to choose whatever has the highest value here. In this case, that would be the value of 1. And here we come back to the context. So we don't want to check the distance to the character itself, because that doesn't make a lot of sense. What we want to do is we want to check the distance to our player context, which I just now realized I misspelled. And here we can do some other things in the score. So we can clamp the minimum score to be a specific value. So we want to maybe for this test always make sure that everything is scored at least at 0 0.2, right? Or maybe at most we wanted to score at 0 0.6, something weird like that. You can do that. You can also uh, influence the fall off. So this is just linear, meaning if you're twice as far away, your score is going to be twice as low. But you can also do things like square, where it builds up slowly, or uh, the square root, where you... Just these usual things that you've learned about in math class, no doubt. We're going to stick with linear for now. The scoring factor is kind of like the weight of how much this specific test that you're doing and scoring things on is going to be weighed against any other ones, because we can add multiple tests in a single query. So we can say... Going back to the enemy that throws its weapon and then has to go pick it up, but also has to worry about not getting too close to the player. We can say, okay, your weapon will influence with a scoring factor of 1 in the positive direction. So any points around the weapon will be scored positively by 1. But anything that is close to the player will be scored negatively with 2. So that way... It has a preference for staying away from the player compared to getting close to its own weapon. And of course, you could also make the player then have a different fall-off, so that it only scores things very negatively very close around the player, but then it falls off relatively quickly, and so on and so forth. So now if we go through this, and we press F8, we can see that around the player, it's all uh, low numbers. And the further away we get from the player, so all the way over here, is the score of 1. If we then go back to our behavior tree here, and we run this query, we can choose which query we want to run. We only have one of them, of course, at the moment. And we want to uh, run for the single best item, single best item from the best 5%, single best item from the best 25%, or all matching. Let's go for single best item. If you want a little bit of randomness, you can also get the single uh, best from the top 5%, or so on. Then, which blackboard key are we going to set this to? Uh, for us, of course, that's going to be the move location. So it's going to try to run away from the player. And while doing so, it is going to set the location that it should be moving to, to whatever this query runs. So this is one way to set that up. There's actually an even easier way to do that. And that is if we just add in a selector here. You can actually run a query as a service on a uh, node. So we can even put it on here. And that way we can say uh, we want to move to location. And every half a second or so, we want to run the query that we uh, made. And of course, that's going to update the move location. So that way you don't need to worry about the parallel node, which can be a little bit weird sometimes. And now we will see a enemy that will be constantly trying to move away from where we are at. So wherever we go, he is going to find the furthest point from us in the nav mesh and move to that instead. His animation blueprint doesn't seem to be working all too well, though, but that's not the point of this video. So that's the basic idea of queries. So now I change a couple of things around, so it's going to be more scared of the player than it cares about getting towards its goal. So now it wants to go toward the box, but when I get close to the box, it gets the hell away from here and finds a place far away from me, which is a lot more important to it. But then when I move away from the box, it knows, hey, wait a second, you exist far away again, and I'm going to go to the box. And when I go back close to the box, it's going to start running away from the box again. And again, this is a pretty simple and uh, not overly intelligent artificial intelligence uh, to work with. Hopefully it gives you guys a bit of a better insight as to how all of this works. Again, this project file with this very basic setup is down below in the description for patrons and YouTube members to download and look through a little bit and just play around with if you'd like.
And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 